We are just past one of the hour. You're watching CNN. I'm Brooke Baldwin. Uh, in the hours after Chicago police officer Jason Van Dyke bonded out of jail on murder charges and the death of 17-year-old Laquan McDonald, Black Lives Matter protesters rallied outside that jail. And one of those protesters was a local pastor by the name of Daniel Hill. And Pastor Hill is white. And for a moment, he turned the protest staging area into a pulpit. He openly prayed and confessed before the crowd, asking God to forgive his white brethren and sisters for devaluing so many black lives. God, if I may be so bold as a white male to Unreal. confess on behalf of my white brethren and sisters yeah. for the history we have brought to this moment, the history of holding our people, our color, our kind as the epitome of most valuable and of devaluing so many other people, of devaluing so many black lives. And none of us want to say it out loud, but we show it in the ways that our systems play out get a job every day yeah. in our country. We see it. They put me when in the system too. And sisters made in your precious image. Yes. Yeah. Our this does down. divide people. It shots over Fucking and ridiculous. over and over. We we think of the precious blood shed in this city by Rakeem Boyd, by Laquan McDonald, by so many whose names are probably to George you. Soros. And we repent. We repent of the violent acts done in the name of racism. We repent of the apathy that has caused so many of us to sit on the sidelines and just watch in a bewildered state. We confess of everything that has gotten in your way of righteousness and justice flowing like a river. We confess the ways that our white All supremacy lives, has infected man. our judicial system, All. the way it has infected our police system, where it has minimized the lives of yes. other people. You just heard the powerful prayer. Here is the man himself, senior pastor of River City Community Church, Daniel Hill. Pastor Hill, thank you so much for the time. Yeah, it's great to be with you. Take me back to last night and just tell me what moved you to, to pray like that. Well, we're all just heartbroken over what happened and heartbroken over the continual realities there. So when a group of us pastors uh, worked together to do this prayer rally, um, I was asked by them to do a prayer of repentance, and so that is what I thought was most appropriate in that moment. And when you said, we don't want to say it out loud, what were you getting at there? Well, you know, I'm, so I'm coming at this from a Christian perspective. So one of the signature beliefs of Christianity is that repentance is the key to God's heart, that we believe in a God who is loving, who is grac grac gracious, that is compassionate, that wants to pour that out, but that we've got to confess our sins, that we have to acknowledge it, that we have to name it. And um, I like that word repent. It's got an idea of, at least in the biblical sense, when you repent, you're supposed to change your actions, but even before changing your actions, you're supposed to change the way you Look think. That's a thinking kind of a word. We get the same word pen pensive from it. And so you know, I think Brian Stevens does a great job on this. He, on he this talks about how face. going all the way back to slavery, when you see that we so instituted the system of slavery in our country, it was horrific in every way. We all know that. It's, el human it's over. Kind of human being knew how terrible that it was. So we had to do something to justify. We had to do something to make peace with this horrible reality that was all around us. So we created a narrative. There's still slavery narrative in other countries. Black people could be with human trafficking. That black people could be devalued, that they could be seen as less than white people. We confirm that narrative. To make another movement the that does nothing except for, the Constitution for black people. people against each other or pick more more one race over another is absolutely that ridiculous. That though slavery may have been formally All or nothing that narrative in America. is alive and well in today's day and age. And it infects, it diseases every system and every structure. And it continues to pet perpetuate this lie that black lives can be devalued and, and that we, they can be denied personhood. And that's something that personhood? we have to constantly repent oh, of. Okay. I think that you are speaking about Been something that a lot of people perhaps don't have the, the confidence to say out loud, and so I appreciate you talking about this. Let me just read, I was on your website today, and you know, you've written you, you, similar messages before. This was after, this is a blog of yours from July, following the death of a black man by a white police officer. And you wrote, Dear White drugs. People, I hope you will burn with outrage when you are exposed to the chronic, persistent racial injustice That's what in our society. End don't of defend the war yourself. On drugs. Don't disassociate yourself. Don't redirect the anger. That just happens. let it burn. Um, here's what I'm Everyone. wondering with, with these words. I'm also wondering on the we'll flip side, do, do you risk painting an entire race of people as racist? And continue to have... Uh, well, 
un I'm much more wanted concerned with the system and structures than I am individual behavior. And I think this is where I get stuck in conversations with a lot of my white friends. Is true they're so eager to show that they're on the right side of this Prison and that they avoid you know, anything that could sound politically incorrect or sound racist. And I'm like, great, I, I hope you do that. I think that's only a small part of what is the problem. Uh, there's this narrative that's alive and well, and it's diseasing, it's infecting the very roots of our systems and structures. And until Propaganda. we can begin a de-rooting process of that, there's never going to be change. We have to have the will to change that. So my goal isn't to help people prove that we're not racist. My goal is to help white people and others confess that we are all infected by this disease narrative. And that until this narrative this gets named and, and we start to root it out, things are not going to change. Bank on it. Pastor.